Hey, good morning. Morning, everyone. I have an issue with the light. It's kind of annoying, but yeah. How is everyone doing? I've seen good progress on the on the dashboard. I've seen a few people completing level one, a few people completing level two, uh, even some level three already. Hey, Motoko morning. <laughs> I'll wait uh, one more minute. Today we'll talk about data structures. So that's the the big topic for the week. How we can store data, how we can get data, how we can update data. Uh, so yeah, I I think today will be very interesting. If you struggle with level one or level two, there are a lot of uh, answers today. All right, let's go. So this corresponds to chapter six of the bootcamp repository with the chapters that you have. This is number six, storing data in data structures. We'll talk about array, list, uh, buffer, hash map, and tree map. So first thing, let's talk about array. I'll import array from the base library. And I'll create, hey, I'll create my first array. So, um, like this. Mm, this is, this is the correct syntax. Syntax. So array in Motoko, uh, you can use them to store. Uh, pieces of data, but it needs to be always the same type. So you cannot store text with natural number or you cannot store uh, text with int or boolean. It needs to be one uh, specific type, which you need, you need to specify here. And also the array, uh, they are not uh, very flexible in the sense that once you have an array of a fixed size, you cannot change the size. So array are good for storing data where you know it's not going to change, like how much data you have, but it's not good for adding data. Um, adding data, you probably would use a buffer. And actually, array, uh, they have a dedicated module. So array here, they have a dedicated module with, um, as you can see, tons of functions, utilities functions that you can use on it. A few of them, uh, for example, array.find is very useful, uh, array.happen. Uh, it's not recommended to use it because it's depre deprecated, as you can see, uh, because it's uh, linear complexity. Uh, so that's why you should use a buffer uh, if you want to add things. Let's do a quick test with array.find. So um, let's say, um, yeah, let, let me show you how you can actually use this documentation because I know sometimes it can be confusing to understand what this means. Um, essentially here we have a generic type. So you need to replace the generic type by the type of your array. Let, to, let me do an example. Um, is hello in our array. So we take an array uh, of text and we will return a Boolean, which is saying, is the word hello inside our array or not? And to do that, we will do array.find. So this one, the first parameter is the array. So the array that we provide uh, here, array. 
And the second parameter is going to be the predicate. So it's going to be um, a function that returns, that takes whatever is inside our array and returns a Boolean. To make this a bit clearer, maybe I should define a predicate here. So function, this is our predicate. It takes a text, so and it returns a Boolean. And this will test if our text is equal to hello. Uh, yeah. And then we can use it here. So predicate. Um, this returns uh, an element which is optional. So Actually, let's copy this here so we don't have to switch every time. This returns an element that is optional uh, of type optional text in our case, because in our case, the X is a text. So optional results is going to be, uh, yeah, I need to command this out. Um, so we haven't seen that, but it's in the documentation. In Motoko, you have usually something called optional type, which is either null or the type. So for example, option type text is going to be either a text or a, a null value. And to see if it's a null value or a text, we can use switch. And you should use switch most of the time. So switch optional result. And you have the case where it's new. Uh, we will do something here later, do. Or the case where it's uh, not new. So it's like um, value. We can call it however we want. So let's go back to what we're doing. Um, this is going to return the first value in the array for which the predicate is true. So it's going to return the first value in the array, which is equal to hello. If it don't, if it doesn't find any of those value, it doesn't find an, a hello, it's going to return null. So in this case, we can return false. We don't have um, hello in our array. In this case, we can return true. And we can test that. So quickly, I can deploy. Uh, let's say we have an array with three three values. The first one is world. The second one is hi and hola. This should return false because we don't have hello inside. Yeah, but if we change this and we try again, this return true. Okay, so this is how we could use uh, an array. This is maybe not like something that you need to do during the bootcamp, but just so you know, you can use array. And they have tons of functions. Uh, you can do like um, map, you can do filter. Everything is in the, the documentation here. Okay, so array, done. Now let's talk about buffer, especially since on the day one, on the level one, we are using buffer. So this is how to create a buffer. For example, let's say I want to store a list of goals. So buffer dot buffer of type text is equal to buffer dot buffer of type text. And we need to specify the initial value. So you can start with zero. The syntax here might sound a bit like complex uh, or 
not clear like it's not clear why we have two times buffer but it's actually so you have buffer the module um here so the buffer module where the class buffer is defined so essentially what you do is you import the module and you import the class from the module and that's what is explained here um buffer dot buffer this time it's for natural number and the initial capacity is set to three so initial capacity is going to be how much uh, elements you can put in the buffer but it doesn't really matter because it's going to grow automatically the more things you add uh, the buffer is going to grow automatically so even if you've set zero or 10 or uh, 100 it's not going to matter that much usually you want to set an initial value that is low because if you don't fill your buffer and you have like a huge initial value you will uh, take a lot of space and memory that is not useful okay so that's it now we could do a public function to add goals so add goal uh, we will take a goal of type text and we will return uh, nothing so the unit type to add elements inside a buffer, you simply need to, to take the buffer and do a dot add. So dot add and the goal. And that's it. Maybe I will also add the query function to uh, show goals. So You can easily convert a buffer to an array. Uh, you cannot directly share your buffer because the buffer is a class, uh, and you can only share types uh, that you you cannot share a class directly. So, for example, what I'm trying to say is like, if I do this, uh, and I just try to return the goals like this. You're going to run into an issue, a uh, shared function as non shared return type. So the public functions, they are also shared because they can be accessed by other persons. And you can never share uh, a class. So any, any object that is a class, and the buffer is a class, if you look at um, the, the, the functions that you have on it, the methods cannot be shared. And that's why you need to convert to an array before uh, sharing with the outside world. So you would do something like this. Buffer dot two array and the list of goals. I'm using this function here. Uh, two array, uh, no, not this one. Actually you have uh, two times this function in the buffer library. Buffer was recently updated uh, by Definity. They've kind of modified how the whole module works. So you have a lot of depreciated functions, which mean you should avoid using them. The one I'm using is the, the other one. Yeah, this one. I'm using this one. So buffer dot two array and then the buffer okay let's see so if we deploy this So it should be empty right now. Okay. Uh, I will add a few goals. And verify that this returns correctly. Okay. 
So if we take a look at what we have to do in the level one uh, here, actually we have a lot of uh, buffer functionalities to use. So we have this. Uh, let me see. Okay, so that's so that's so that that's for the goals. Here. Um so that's kind of what we've done, I think. Let me see. Mm. Ah, oops. Yeah, we have add goals and get goals. Oh, so that's just like this. Yeah. So essentially, that corresponds to the task seven and eight from the level one. Uh, here, you needed to create a buffer. And I've implemented as a mutable variable. So it should be like this, but it actually doesn't really matter in that case. Um, so yeah. OK. So the next one, and that's a bit more complex, are the hash map and the tree map. Um, and I want to go back to the chapter that corresponds to those data structures. So at least I will skip it for now. It's not used during the week. Uh, it's also a recursive type. and. Um, yeah, I will skip it for now. It's not the most useful. HashMap and TreeMap are super useful. So they are used everywhere in Motoko um, because that's where we can easily add elements and modify elements and um, delete elements easily. easily. So let's see. HashMap. So we have a key and a value uh, like any other HashMap. And that's how we define it in Motoko. So let's say, I will take some reference from the levels that we have. Let's say I create a type uh, member. So let's say, I will, sh I will cast it as a public type so it can be shared public type member, and then I want to create a hash map that takes uh, members and so like this. So let's members. And again, I need this time to import hash map. So you would import it like this. It's the same. Uh, syntax as the um, as the buffer you essentially need to import hashmap from the hashmap library so this is hashmap.hashmap and how you define one is like this so you can see an example here you have a number you have an equal function and a hash function I would set it to zero. And I would use principle.equal and principle.ash. OK, so two things. I will define uh, I will define what is a principle in a few minutes, how to define a hash map. Mm, I think it's it's explained here. So, uh, yeah. So what we need to define a hash map is three things. We need initial capacity, like with the buffer. We need 
equality function with the key. So here is the key, here is the value that we store. We need the equality function and the hash function. And so usually those functions are already defined for you. You don't need to write them, uh, especially for the type principle, we can use the built-in function. And once we have the hash map, we can start to add things into it. So let's say public function add a member. Mm, we'll take, let's say, a name and an age. Right now, uh, I will, okay. So usually there is another type that we use when we use HashMap or TreeMap, which is the result type. So the result type is a new one. That is super useful because it handles error for you. So it's a type which is either OK or error. Um, and you will see how I use it. So I will do result.result. .result. Return nothing or a text. So this is the syntax. What I want to see is, is there already a member? Um, if it If there is already a member, I will return it. I will return and not complete the function. If there is no member, I will add the member to the hash map. So to do that, we need to switch. Oops. We need to access the principle of the color first. So that's how you get it. This syntax is explained in uh, the one of the chapters. So. When I call this function, I have uh, an identity, um, which is corresponding to my principle, and that's how you get it. So the coder is here. And I will switch on the hash map. So members.get, then the color. Um, and if I return null, so there is no one corresponding to this principle, then I will add it. So member.add coder, and then I will need to define the member. Name and age. And th there is a lot of things that I'm doing here. There are a lot of new concepts I'm introducing. So I will make a little break after this to just quickly recap what, what we've done. Um, dot, uh, it's dot put. And then return OK. If there is already a member, So, yeah, I'm ex I'm uh, adding new concepts, a lot of, of concepts like principle, hash map, switch, result. So let's do a little break. Here, um, I have imported three modules, hash map, which is defined here, how to define one, principle and result. Principle corresponds to the identity of users. So I would like to show you something. For example, um, with DFX, which is the tool um, that I use locally to deploy canisters. It's not needed for the bootcamp, but this is a tool that we use as developers. I have an identity and I can have a principle. So this is my principle for my main identity. Essentially, it's like my public key. So it's my public uh, facing identity. And for example, uh, let's actually do something fun. So I will add a function here. Which return the principle of the color. 
and I take no arguments and I just return, um, let's say a text. And I forgot the funk. So the color that is here is the principle of the person calling the function. And I can do something like principle dot to text like this of the color. And I return that. So I call this function, it's returning my identity as a text. I can actually deploy it. OK, so this is the canister ID here. If I try to call from here, so from my Motoko Playground, I will have uh, a specific answer, which is this one. It's the anonymous principle because I'm not logging right now. Uh, I know that people try to log in, and apparently there is an issue with the login. Uh, so I will try now. And yes, there is still the issue. So I cannot fix this one. It's not on my side. It's an uh, internet identity that has little issue. So we cannot log in from here. And if you try to do something like this to see the principle, you will always return this one because it's the anonymous principle. But what we could do is do it from here. So the FX um, canister call network IC. Then I input the canister ID. And um, the method that I want to call, which is return principle of the color. Here I'm using another tool to essentially call this canister that I've deployed from uh, my identity. This is this one. So it should return uh, my identity. So let's try it out. OK, so looks good. It's returning my identity. So the color is always the principle of the person calling the function. That's why we are using it here, because we need to identify who is calling. When we know who is calling, we can actually use it to uh, store this person in the database. So when you log in with Internet Identity, for example, you go to the Motoko Bootcamp website, you log in here. you have a principle um, to that is able to authenticate yourself with the application. Uh, I should, maybe in the future, I will show you here in the profile, like I will display your principle here, but each of you that registered with the platform, you have uh, this little identifier. And so I'm storing all the students in a similar hash map. So like, um, yeah, basically your key is the principle, so your identity, and uh, the value is um, your GitHub profile, uh, email address, and so on. So with the hash map, uh, we have something, we have a few methods, which I explain also in the docs of the bootcamp, but we can take a look here. Dot gets, essentially dot gets, we give it a key, and it returns a value if uh, it returns a value, if there is a value, if there is not, it returns null. That's what we are doing here. What I'm doing is with the switch here, I'm checking, is there a member that corresponds to this color? If there is not, I create it based on the information that I have here. And then I put it. Um, and when you put something with an hash map, it's this one. You need the key and the value. So it's going to put um, this member with this <laughs> color uh, identity. And then I return, OK. So this is my result, like, OK. So this works. Otherwise, if there is already a member, so if we are in the second case, then I just return an error. Uh, there is already a member for that, maybe for that uh, identity. OK, do we have a question at this point? This is very, very uh, important to understand what's happening here. Uh, but 
yeah, I understand that we need to take some time because it's a new concept and also it's a lot of different pieces. You have to know what is a principle, what is a hash map, and how to how to combine both. So now let's say I want to get a member. So I would do public query func because I want to get something. So get member. I will provide the principle for which I want to get the member. And I will return an optional member. So why optional? Because there might not be a member corresponding to the principle that I will give. And so I will just do return members that get and the principle. Now let's do a quick deployment. I will add the member. So uh, let's say I will add myself to the canister. Yeah. OK. And now I will try again, but with the same identity. So like, uh, let's say Alex. And it should, says, it should say, no, there is already a member for that identity. So what is my identity? Well, if you followed, you should know that it's the anonymous because I'm not logging with this playground. So here is how I can take my principle. And I should get my identity. Yes, it works. So that looks great. Um, and now I would like to do something a bit different. I would like to add a new member from uh, from the, the DFX tool that I'm showing you. So. Let's say this time, instead of calling this function, I will call add member. So add member, uh, Alex and 30. And this time it should work because with this identity, which is a different one, I don't have the, um, I, I haven't registered yet. So this, this should work. We have another error which says that uh, unexpected type when parsing not. So apparently I need to specify that this is a not because it's not recognizing it. Okay. And uh, yeah, it's returning the variant. Okay, yeah, this is a little, it's not as clean from the command line because um, it's not encoding and decoding properly the, the types, but this should have worked. Uh, this should have worked. We can actually test it. Maybe if we do this, so we take my principle from the command line and we try to get the member. And that's it, we have it. So we have the member Alex, age 30. Mm, I have a good question in the chat. So can you also take member and principal as a function parameter? Uh, so for example, could I do something like principal here? And yes, you can do that, but this is very dangerous because uh, the color, the principle of the color is certified by the internet computer. So you have a guarantee that the uh, um, the person that is calling is really the person that is behind the identity, um, behind the, the principle of the caller. Because look, uh, I could, in theory, if I know your principle, and the principle is a public information, like I'm sharing this today because uh, it's like my public key. You, you can know it, you can use it, but it doesn't it doesn't have value. So it's a public information. If you know my principle and you use the principle here instead of color, so like, let's say 
I remove that. And we use the color from a parameter of the function. Here, someone that doesn't have my identity, so don't, someone that doesn't have my private key, could just put my principal as an argument and use my identity. So we don't want to do that. Um, we want to have the coder from here. Here, I use the principle in the parameter, but it's not really a problem because we are just checking. So I, I'm doing uh, basically like a public database, like anyone can uh, like see for which identity, which member is associated. But when I'm doing a like modification, like add member, or if I do a remove member now, I want to use the caller because I know that only the, the caller, the owner of the principle can call this function. Otherwise you would be subject to someone kind of using the identity of someone else. When should we use the shared world in our functions? Yeah, that's another good question. Uh, okay, I'll pause this for now. And we will go back to this. So it's really simple. Uh, you don't need to use shared if you don't use the color, like if you don't want to access the, the color information. Um, for example, here, I don't use it because we don't need the, the color information. If you need the color information, you have to, you cannot just do public color. Uh, you actually need this shared keyword. There is no good reason I can give you uh, to explain like why when we want the color, we also have to add shared. It's just how it has been um, in on the IC, on the internet computer. This is like a syntax, but yeah, so. Most of the time you can define your function like this. You don't need to, to add specifically color, uh, shared, sorry. But if you need the color, you need the shared. So, yeah. And even after two years of building, I'm still somewhat sometimes confused as uh, with like, is it a public shared color or public color shared function? Uh, sometimes you need to go back, take a look at what you've done and just uh, use the same syntax. So remove member. For query calls, no need to add shared. Uh, no, that's that could be a need. So for example, um, I think it's like this. All right, that's exactly what I was saying. Uh, I think it's this one. It's this syntax. So it's really, this one, I really hate it. Uh, it it's not easy to remember, but it's not a, uh, a case of query or update. Um, it's a case of, do I need to access the caller or not? Do I need to know who is calling the function or do I don't? If, if you don't, you can remove this um, and you can remove this as well. But if you need the caller, uh, so you, you want to access this information. Then you need to also have a uh, shared. And this is the case for update function. And this is also the case for, um, for query function. So if I can do a little summary, let me see. <laughs> uh, This would be the simplest syntax. So for example, um, uh, 
I'm I'm not doing anything here. Uh, so this is. Yeah, this is just for the test. I will actually use test. So as far as I know, that's the four, uh, the four kind of situation you can encounter. There is no uh, tests, test four. So you can have an update function where you don't need the color, and that's the simplest syntax of all of them. Uh, just public function, the name of your function, and then the code for your function. Query function without the color. So you just add query. Update function with the color. This time you need to add public shared color. So you have this part, which you need to add. And then query function with the color. So public shared query color. Um, yeah, this is like the big, big syntax. How is the interrogation mark? How does the interrogation mar mark work? So I, I'm assuming you're referring to this one. Um, so the interrogation mark is optional member. So this is a type member. This is optional type member. The difference is that the optional type is the type member plus the null value. So it can represent the case where you don't have a member. For example, here, when we do member.getsColor, we don't know in advance if there is a member or not. Maybe the member hasn't registered with this identity yet. So we can have two cases. We have the case where it's null, and we have the case where it's a, it's an optional member. Um, and that's why here, for example, here, I'm returning an optional member because members.get, uh, we can take a look here, returns an optional value. So in this case, an optional member. And for that, there is like, um, dedicated chapter, which is chapter seven, I believe. Yeah, it's here. If you are, if it's your first time with the optional types, I recommend that you read, take a read at this one. Okay, so let's uh, maybe make a little bit of space. Now I want to remove a member, so I would do remove member. And I could do it like this. So there is a function in the HMAP library, which is dot delete. And it will delete the value associated with the key. If the key is not present, it will not affect anything. So we could do something like this. Um, could do members dot remove the color. Once again, if we think about what we're doing, if we 
Uh, yeah, and I need to return. Uh, actually, it's not remove, it's delete. If we think about what we're doing, uh, in this case, only the owner of this identity, so the caller, is able to essentially delete his profile. But if we were to do like this, with the principal as a parameter, or like, I don't know, caller, maybe. Yeah. Uh, this would be a huge problem because anyone with my principal could delete my member uh, record. So like, Anyone that can copy paste this would be able to delete uh, to delete my identity. So that would be very dangerous. And that's why you, in this case, we should use a public shared color. Can we rename the color? Uh, mm, not to my knowledge. Uh, no, this is like a. Yeah, you really need to use the term color exactly like this. Uh, it's a it's a kind of system uh, parameter, so you cannot really customize it. Okay. And so. So. The last type, uh, like data structure. I mean, it's not the last, there are more data structures in Motoko and actually uh, there is a whole package manager, which is called MOPS, where there are people building uh, libraries and packages and there are like, some advanced data structures, but I'm talking only about the one from the, the base language. And the other one that we use a lot is TreeMap. Uh, but the good thing is that TreeMap is exactly the same as HashMap. So you could take this and replace HashMap by, by TreeMap and it, will st it would still work. So we can take a look. Um, the only difference is the underlying uh, data structure. So for the HashMap and the TreeMap, uh, those are different. But the interface, so like treemap.put, you have hashmap.put, um, treemap.replace, you have hashmap.replace, and they are doing exactly the same operation. Uh, also, to define a treemap, it's slightly different. The only difference is that instead of having this zero, like initial value, you can only... Um, you only need the two functions. So you have one less parameter. So let's see. If I do this, I completely replace. Everything should still work and we can try it out. Yeah. So that's good because uh, if you have a code with HashMap and you want to replace with a TreeMap, uh, this is very easy to do. Yeah, so we compile and we deploy it. And that's about it for the data structure. So with all of this, you should be in a position to complete level two and level even level three. So in level two, level three. So level two, you need to build a data structure. So that's what we've kind of uh, touched on. We, we haven't implemented all the functionalities, but you need to build the data structures to update your members, uh, get your members, and so on. Remove members. You have all the functions that you need here. And once again, you have access to the documentation for results and HashMap. In the level three, you need to build a token. So it's uh, also, you will need to have a HashMap or TreeMap behind it, which is kind of your ledger. Um, and yeah, you can build all of this with uh, HashMap or TreeMap. Why would you use, uh, okay, so I've missed this question. Is the quarter type implicit? Uh, do you mean? Do you mean 
the color type like as principle yeah it's implicit in that case like you don't you could do this i think yeah but it would be unnecessary and actually that's a good thing like maybe if you're confusing by what the color is um like what what's the type of color you could write it like this um and that will always remind you oh this is a color so it's a principle i can use it as a principle why would you use tree map over ash map uh those are different uh performances depending on the operations you do like i that goes beyond my current knowledge but i know we have some benchmarks uh online where essentially for some operations tree map will be more efficient and for others, HashMap would be more efficient. I know that as a good rule, most people will tell you TreeMap is better, like most of the time. I think there are specific circumstances where HashMap is better uh, in Motoko. At least I'm just talking about Motoko. But uh, yeah, I see most people use TreeMap instead of HashMap. No, they are not stable. So. This is a good question, but we haven't seen what is a stable variable uh, at the moment. But so some structures are stable, some are not. Um, stables mean that they are persistent across upgrades. So you've seen when we upgrade our canister, we actually lose all the data inside, uh, which is kind of annoying, but we will find a solution for that later. And some structures can be stable. Uh, for example, arrays are stable, but some structures are not. And all the structures that are classes, so Buffer, HashMap, TreeMap are classes because you can, uh, like, you have functions that you can call on them. So, um, dot size, for example, this is a method. So, this is a class. All the classes are not stable, um, but there are some people working on, like, implementation of HashMap and TreeMap stable, but this is not from the base library. I shared my level two task. Buffer is not stable as well. Uh, buffer is the same as a uh, tree map or hash map. It's a class and it's not stable. As a good uh, test, you can actually use the stable keyword. So we could try. Uh, so this is I'm going like beyond what I wanted today, but um, in Motoko, we have the concept of stable memory and stable variable, which are persistent across upgrades. So they are not reset. And we could do like a stable array. For example, and it's actually Yeah, it's stable. It's stable first, and then the the declaration. So this works. So this is perfectly fine. We can do that because an array is a stable type. For this type, it doesn't more. It doesn't doesn't work because variable members is declared stable, but as non-stable type because, as you can see, we have function on the object. So we can do members dot get members dot add. Those are all functions behind, so you cannot declare it as stable. Uh, you would, for example, be able to convert your tree map to, a, to an array um, and then make the array stable and then upgrade. That would be like one, one way to solve the problem, but we'll see later. And buffer is the same. I shared my level two task to another computer. I added new members. When I query call all the members, it's not adding the member from other computer. Is the playground only for local deployment? No, the playground is actually live. So when you deploy something, you can see that you have a countdown of 20 minutes, but it's live for 20 minutes. So your canister can be accessed from any computer and you can interact with, from your phone or any computer. If you're not seeing the member, I probably have an idea of why. I'm guessing that you're calling from the Candid UI, 
uh, so from this place, either from the playground directly with the integrated Candid UI or from the full Candid UI, but you are not logged in. So you don't have an identity. So when you're calling like this, that's what we've seen. There is an anonymous identity, but the anonymous identity is actually shared by everyone. Like everyone that has that is calling, even with another computer, I, I could like open a new tab and so on. Like I could try that. I will still have the same identity. So if you're trying to add members with the same identity, uh, you will you will have like only one member. To solve that, uh, unfortunately, I don't know either. If you have DFX installed, you can try it out. So um, you can install DFX, the tool I'm using, and call your canister from DFX with this syntax. Uh, so DFX canister call. You can find the documentation online for DFX. Or you should be able to log in in theory, but apparently there is a, there is an issue with internet identity um, and the playground. So I cannot fix that. It's beyond my reach. Um, I will contact the the persons that maintain the playground and the internet identity, but it will take some time to solve. Uh, so right now we don't have a way to log in, unfortunately. All right, sounds good. So good luck everyone. <laughs> Just a reminder that you can ask question on the chat. Um, we still have the, the ask question and the general Discord chat. I'm answering all the questions about the platform if you have a problem and good luck everyone. I see you later for the mentorship session. Uh, yeah, one thing. I wanted to precise, uh, so before we leave, this afternoon we, sh we were supposed to have a brainstorming session as a team, but this will be canceled uh, for some reason. So there will not be a brainstorming session. There will be a mentorship session at the time planned. Uh, yeah, sorry about that, but uh, we are not able to do that with the current uh, situation. So thanks. See you guys.